Hello, everyone out there. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is my great pleasure to introduce Francisc Ballant. He is an innovation lead at Zero Bounce. He's joining us, from my perspective anyways, all the way on the other side of the globe, the United Arab Emirates. Francisc, thank you so much for making some time and talking to me. Sure. Um, thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure to be here. It's, it's a pleasure. I can't imagine somebody that's over there in UAE having time to talk to me. <laughs> yes. What can I say? For me, it's, uh, it's just another place. It's the best place for me, the best trade-off. I don't see it from external side, of course, because I'm already here. So it feels normal. Right. I appreciate your view. So we have Zero Bounce employees all over the globe, Europe, the West Coast, and East Coast of America. But tell us about yourself. Uh, well, I joined Zero Bounce three years ago, more than three years ago. I am a builder, let's say. I lead the technical side of the platform, not necessarily the um, visual things, but more what happens uh, behind it, stability and accuracy and so on. Before being an innovation lead, I was um, more like a um, team lead, let's say, but still focused on the technical side, uh, making sure we are maintaining the platform, always doing the proper updates, implementing new features, and uh, making sure our customers have uh, a great experience uh, overall with the platform. Great experience with the platform is very important. Tell us a little bit more. How do you fit into Zero Bounce? How do I fit? Well, culturally, at least, uh, let's take it from that point of view. I think the um, execs, um, the leadership of Zero Bounce, they have um, this uh, this technical background. Um, I think that's exceptional uh, in this industry. Like even the um, chief operating officer, he uh, has a technical background. So having this leadership, I feel like uh, I'm on the same level culturally. Uh, I have a technical background. Not many people know, but uh, the leadership, is, they all have this early stage, let's say. I know a few, a few of the uh, have this uh, experience. Early stage, uh, in technology, just uh, being um, in this uh, space um, uh, models you differently. And, um, I feel like I fit culturally uh, with, uh, with zero pounds due to my uh, similar um, early experience with technology. Like I got my first computer when I was 10 and I just jumped in and never let it go. So similarly, I see the leadership had uh, the same approach to technology and so on, yeah. What do you see as the biggest challenge people face in email? Well, um, making sure you email people that will find your content re relevant. I think that's the top goal for everyone and not only email. Having that um, targeting always the audience uh, with the high accuracy is it's a top goal. Never achievable, I will say, um, because uh, people change. Uh, be one day um, they will be interested uh, and um, on one subject and then uh, after a few months um, they will find your content irrelevant. So that's a challenge. It's an ongoing challenge. It's a tough challenge and uh, you need to be on top of it. You have to invest a lot of time um, uh, and resources, of course, to keep that audience relevant to your content. Yeah, that's yeah. top one. So much of Zero Bounce is just about the struggle that people have to reach the inbox. And somebody might be thinking, well, if I send an email, why wouldn't it reach the inbox? What are some of the biggest reasons why emails don't show up in the inbox? I would say the misconfiguration of their infrastructure. I see it often. So yeah, with our tool, you can literally, we're going to give you step-by-step -step, uh, guide how to do so, how to configure your infrastructure, at least like how to get started properly. So before you start, check your settings and we have tools for that. So I guess in a way you could like, if you give your, if you give some interest, you could have a good start. Uh, there are great tools out there and Zero Bounce is one of them. Definitely. A writer that I know, a blogger, she was telling me that she had an email list that she had not sent any emails to in about a year. No emails whatsoever. And she was thinking about just 
picking up where she left off, sending emails again to that, that list. What do you think somebody should do if they're in that situation? They have a list. It's been a while since they sent any emails, and now they want to get back to what they were doing, but it's been so long. What do they do? Well, um, I mentioned this um, this idea that you need to be on top of it, and um, sending an email without knowing anything about the target, the destination, it's it's risky for for your bonds and for your your um, email reputation. I would have to say you have to check that list, and how do you check it? Is with um, email validation, with AI scoring. So having those tools um, used right before getting back to your audience will literally improve your uh, outcomes, let's say. Yeah, it's not just email validation that Zero Bounce does. There's other tools. There's the email validation platform, which is the main thing. Is there a tool at Zero Bounce that you think is particularly useful? Depends on the use case, of course, but uh, yeah, the the main one is the email validation that will get you past average industry, let's say, with your uh, outcomes. On top of that, there are tools which can improve everything else, and um, it depends on where you are, at which stage you are. So, as I mentioned before, if you are like just st uh, starting, first will be to check your configuration, which can take like ten minutes. You check, and also if you have someone. Uh, a little bit more technical you can also in 10 minutes you can configure adding some settings to that domain it, it will get you much forward with with your infrastructure with your uh, email success let's say rate of success so to answer the question i will say inbox tester maybe let's start like for everyone i think that will be everyone can use that yeah e inbox and email tester let's say both those tools are first thing before you even email even send one email um, yeah. Well, tell us a little bit more about the Zero Bounce inbox tester. What can people expect? I would say um, so. It's it's easy to um, to use. You just um, submit a form, let's say, and based on the details you give us, your email, we're gonna give you a report of all the things we are checking. Um, and if there anything is um, not how it's supposed to be, then we give you a warning or we even say this is like, it's a big mistake. Do not email your customers without uh, this configuration. And uh, we also give the guides. So I will say, don't be shy. Don't skip this, uh, this step. Before you even start emailing, just run email tester, see the report. If it's anything you don't understand, there is customer support, agree customer support from Zero Bones. Give them the question and they will guide you how you can uh, improve uh, your email sending. Well, I don't know about you, but when I'm checking my emails, it can be flooded. I mean, it amazes me. I wake up, I just checked all my emails. Here, here it is again, and there's a couple dozen. It can be difficult to stand out in the inbox because of just the sheer volume of emails that come through. Yet, there are some emails that catch my attention. So what kind of emails tend to catch your attention? For me, it's different, maybe. Um, I um, My inbox is clean. I have tons, tons of emails, and I'm, I'm checking all the emails. So if anything um, that I don't... Uh, I didn't expect I would check it anyway. So getting my attention is if you arrive in the inbox, there is something that uh, sounds good. I don't know. I think leadership uh, subjects, technical subjects, technical reviews, papers, all these kind of emails, I will open them and they will get my attention because that's what I'm interested in. I'm sure it's of interest to a lot of people, the fact that you're over there in UAE. What is it like over there? Well, it's different, definitely. So the Romanian culture, it's uh, one of the eight. So um, being here um, definitely changed uh, my views on things, uh, on some things. I come here mostly for um, the weather. I think that's um, that sealed the deal, let's say. I'm not a fan of winter, although I uh, lived most... Uh, 
of my uh, young age, let's say, uh, in a pretty cold area, like minus 20. Uh, and here it's, uh, I don't know, not even close to that. During the night, maybe if we have uh, minus one or something like this. So yeah, here is it's sunny. I think everyone will uh, will want to to have a. Uh, that, 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 that kind of weather and on average having so much sun it really changes this you i will say and um i also think it's helping with productivity if you are kind of influenced um, on the weather so there is no winter uh closing roads or uh, shutting down the internet maybe some rain um but very little so, yeah and that's pretty nice the, the, the technology way is like uh crazy so i feel like i'm the right space there are things uh, happening here um and it's sunny and there is technology the best deal <laughs> for a technical person like me it's a very efficient country definitely i think it's one of the most efficient ones um the level of uh, te technological adoption um it's unbelievable well um and um yeah it's they try to to scale uh, in an inefficient way um every year um uh, increasing the the tourism uh, well the just increasing the population let's say uh, increasing the tourist number of tourists um, coming in the country so i guess uh, they are strategically um, doing so uh, keeping efficiently scaling efficiently uh, i will say i really respect uh, how they uh, lead this country and the vision they have uh, for the next decades or so is it at all ch challenging for you to work remotely? Because I think you're the only zero bounce employee over there. Isn't that correct? Yeah, yeah. In this country, yeah. Um, I will not say it's challenging. Mm. The remote culture is started to be, it become a norm actually after COVID. So working remotely is now it's like the norm. Um, and yeah, it's just it's a more far away place. Uh, you still have internet access and. That's all you need. Um, yeah, I don't. I see it very standard. Like you could work anywhere. You just need internet. There are like some fundamentals. If you get that, uh, you can work from anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always like to ask this question. It's been very interesting to see the different answers. How can anyone out there who's watching this? How can they make today better? For me, it's very simple. How how I made my days better was um, delete uh, social apps from the phone. <laughs> um, I know many people maybe will not agree with this, but um, I think you could, um, and uh, not, I didn't say this, but um, I read it somewhere on LinkedIn. You could get past the average person in anything you do by just uh, deleting uh, the social media on your phone. So yeah, some years ago, I, um, I am off the Instagram, Facebook, and so on. The most social media I use is the LinkedIn, really, and not on my phone. I browse maybe on the laptop. Other than that, just focus on reading things, learning all these uh, new technique, new new tech, uh, and so on. Yeah. What have you, What have you found getting rid of the social media apps on your phone has done for you? I guess more clarity. It was maybe we don't realize, but just scrolling and seeing that vis visual content and some visual content might affect you even without uh, knowing, but you saw it and it's behind uh, your your mind. And I just stopped really being so, so into because before, I guess you can say I was addicted to social media, but yeah, you can say that it's an addiction to every day have that habit of opening the phone, waking up and checking, scrolling that newsfeed. For me, it sounded like a um, very bad habit, if not addiction. And I wanted to get rid of it. The best way to do it is uninstall the app. And then eventually I deactivate the account and some years ago, and probably I will delete them if I have any thought of activating again. Francisco, you're a smart man. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for letting me ask you some questions. I've enjoyed it. As well. Thank you for uh, having me and yeah, sharing a conversation with you. It was great. Thank you.